We are told that a single phase transformer has a supply voltage of 480 volts and a primary current of 20 amps at full load. The secondary current is 7 amps and lastly there are 600 turns on the primary coil. Now as normal, let's go ahead and note the information that we've been given on a diagram. Okay, so we know that the primary voltage is 480 volts and we know that at full load the primary current is 20 amps. They also tell us that the secondary current is 7 amps and that the number of turns on the primary coil is 600. So let's go ahead and see if we can solve part A, the turns ratio. Okay, so we know that in an ideal transformer uh, energy is conserved, there, is no, there are no energy losses, um, all of the energy in the primary coil is transferred to the secondary coil, in other words the primary voltage multiplied by the primary current is equal to the secondary voltage multiplied by the secondary current. We can rearrange this equation to get that a primary current divided by secondary current is equal to the secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage. Now this should be familiar to you because that is one half of our transformer equation. The ratio of the secondary to the primary voltage is the same as the ratio of the secondary to the primary turns. Now we have both the primary and the secondary current. So we know that the primary current, 20 amps, divided by the secondary current, 7 amps, is going to be in the same ratio as the number of turns on the secondary coil divided by the number of turns on the primary coil. We also know what the number of turns in the primary coil are, that's 600. So therefore the turns ratio, number of turns on the secondary to the number of turns on the primary is going to be given as 20 to 7. That is the simplest way in which we can write that turns ratio. Let's have a look now at number B. So we know from part A that the ratio of the number of turns on the secondary to the number of turns on the primary is 20 to 7. And we were asked to find the number of secondary turns. Well we know the number of primary turns is 600. So we know that 20 divided by 7, that is the same ratio as the number of secondary turns to primary turns or 600. We can rearrange this equation to find that the number of secondary turns is equal to 1714.28571 which we can approximate to simply 1714 turns. When dealing with secondary or primary turns you always need to round up to the nearest unit. Now this makes sense to us. We were told that at full load the primary current is 20 amps and the secondary current is a lower current, 7 amps. Well, if the primary current is lower, sorry, if the secondary current, 7 amps, is lower than the primary current, well, that means that the secondary voltage must be higher than the primary voltage. And if we've got 600 turns in the primary coil, we are expecting to have a greater number of turns in the secondary coil in order for us to step the voltage up. And that's exactly what we find. So let's go ahead and find exactly what the secondary voltage is. Right, well, we know that the ratio of the number of turns in the secondary to the number of turns in the primary is 20 to 7 and that is the same as the ratio of the secondary voltage to the primary voltage. We know that the primary voltage is 480 volts so we can rearrange this equation and that will give us that the secondary voltage is 20 divided by 7 times by 480 volts and therefore the secondary voltage is 1,371.42857 volts which we can approximate to 1,371.43 volts. So just as we expected, this is a step up transformer. It has stepped the voltage up from 480 volts 
to 1371 volts. And that makes sense to us because the primary current is greater than the secondary current. So this must be a step up transformer. Lastly, let's have a look if we can find the active power if the power factor is 0 0.8. Okay, well, we know that the power factor is the active power divided by the apparent power. And we can calculate what the apparent power is because we've got, uh, for example, in the primary coil, we've got the um, total voltage and we've got the amperage at full load. So we can calculate what that apparent power is. But we can rearrange this equation to get that the power factor multiplied by the apparent power is equal to the active power. We know that the power factor is 0 0.8 and we know that we can calculate the apparent power because we've got the voltage and the amperage at full load. So the apparent power is simply 480 volts multiplied by 20 amps. That multiplied by the power factor will give us our active power and therefore we can see that our active power is going to be equal to 7680 watts. Note the units, we're dealing with active power here and the units for active power are watts. But we can rewrite this a little bit more simply as six, sorry, 7.68 kilowatts.